Now that they don't have contact with people, their life is more spiritual, yes? If they need to talk with family or any people, they have to use this room. The nun here and visitors outside. This is called a speaking room, yes? There are double grills because they were allowed to see each other but never touch. Yes, and that is a turntable if they wanted to exchange or receive presents. Wow. That still works? The company is still active even nowadays there are nuns, but the nuns don't live more in this old area. They but moved the, to the new company later. The turntable still works? Ah, oh, you walk about the turn. No more. No more. Okay. No, no, okay. No, no, okay. No, no more. Now the company is huge. The total area is more than 20,000 square meters. Okay. Yes. It was built just by this volcanic rock. Oh. The volcanic rock we call Silar, but Silar is not the name of the rock. Silar was called a shape, the square cut. The walls uh, are painted, were painted. They are colonial colors. The colors don't have meaning. We're going to see ochre, later indigo blue, and later indigo red. Yes. You know, be careful with your clothes because we still use natural pigments. And okay. after the rainy season, the walls need to be repainted okay. every year. Okay. Mm -hmm. These original floors or the original? Originals, yes. Mm -hmm. was only used, only lived here the novices or beginners. In the 17th, 18th century, most of the people that lived in Peru were mestizos, mixture between Spaniards and Peruvians. Most of the families that were Spaniard descendants followed traditions from Spain. The tradition said, for example, that always their second child have to be a nun or a priest. It was important for them because that child prayed for the family. It was a boy, have to be a priest. It was a girl, she have to go in this convent. That child was educated to think that was an honor to become a nun or a priest. Well, and in this case, in this convent, they used to go in very young, at the age of 12 or 14. They married at... It was the same okay. age for getting married, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. oh, I see, okay. And, well, before to become nuns, they used to have to pass a bit of training. Okay. The training was one to four years. During the first four years, they only lived here. Because they were in training, they couldn't have contact with family or contact with the other nuns. They only lived in this area. And they have one teacher that lived with them also. Okay. There are only some rooms. And the common just received seven novices at the same time, seven in training. Okay. And the paintings around where the paintings are a canvas. They were painted by local artists. Uh, they are from 1805. To have paintings help the novices to learn, to repeat, to remember the prayers. It was more didactic. Oh, I see. View. Every room is similar. And the seven rooms are big. Each one was allowed to bring their own belongings. The novices only dressed in white, so we still there. And in the room there are some characteristics. Where we see the bed, yeah. on the top there is an arch. Oh. Arch protect bed in case of earthquakes, tremors, okay. the safer part. Okay. The doors were closets, yes, for oh. belongings. And another for... And what's that? That furniture is called a secretary. In a secretary, they could put their different materials to make the uh, embroideries, for example. Okay. Like okay. needles, threads. Okay. During the training, their families paid to come in every year 100 silver coins. They finished the training, they became nuns. This color is indigo blue. Yes? Let's continue to see another In this area, we find those trees. 
-hmm. We call this area the orange tree cloister. Orange trees for this Dominican convent symbolize eternal life. Very important. And again, we have pictures painted around, pages that help them to learn. It's like if they had a book, yes, to read, like a story. They, if they didn't understand the drawing, they could read there are some parts in all Spanish. So the, the, the ones written down, those are the verses they had to learn? Is that it? Yes, it's oh. the meaning of the drawings. Okay. It's the way they have to interpret it in English. Okay. Here, those uh, furnitures, this room was used like a mortuary. Oh. In case of a nun die, her corpse stayed in this room 24 hours or more. Then it was carried to the cemetery because they were buried in the convent. Never their families participate in those funerals because these women were private. They were cloister nuns and only were nuns inside and a priest that had to celebrate the, the masses. But never, never the families enter or never enter to the cemetery. Only if, in case of Mother Sophia die, the head nun is very important, is commanded by the painter. That painter had the permission to stay in the room because he had to do a painting, a portrait of the head nun already dead. There are some portraits on the both sides of the most important head nun on the left of the comment. The first one on the left, that nun died with her eyes open. And she died with her eyes open. Well, nobody closed her eyes and she stayed that way. Uh. <laughs> You're looking at something? Yeah, for that, you know. Uh, the store? Oh, yeah, so. probably it's already closed. Yeah. yeah, because it's already 5 5. Close That's 5. But there is another shop outside. Outside where you pay your entrance ticket, there's another shop in oh. there. Maybe you can find something that you okay. want. Yes? Now, you said the colors had a meaning no, on the wall. They don't have a meaning. Okay. So, why are... Uh, so, but they were always painted in the same color. Only in the colonial time, Arequipa and most of the cities in Peru used, used those colors. Okay. They, Okay. Maybe the nuns wanted also to have the same like outside and oh. sets in one time. Okay. But now it's a museum and now there are people that do the maintenance, pay it every year after rainy season. But the nuns didn't do it every year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. The channels for rainy season also. Yes. They come to grow bit by bit. More houses, more sorry, more rooms, more nuns. And it has streets. The street had names like Malaga, Cordoba, Toledo, Sevilla, Burgos, huh? Spanish cities. Well, nuns didn't give the names. The, a photographer visited the comedy in 1914 and he took pictures. He, he said that every street for him looks like Spain because he'd been there before. And he called it this a street that had white walls and flowers, like uraniums, like Cor Cordoba. Yes, Cordoba Street. In the uh, 1600s, Arequipa suffered two big earthquakes. The comet was destroyed. Since 1600, any family that had a daughter in the convent was allowed to build the room for her, for their daughters. But families didn't respect the normal way that nuns lived in the convent. They only built comfortable rooms. Yes, in some way, the families built for their daughters houses or apartments, each one with a kitchen. This convent grew bit by bit. It was revealed like a village. Inside the convent there were houses. The nuns didn't eat or cook together. Many bishops were not agreeing with this life because the nuns didn't have communal life. They didn't have a real, they didn't respect their poverty vows. Yes. And also the nuns' family sent to the convent servants. Servants were not nuns, were women that entered to work for the convent. They lived with nuns. Yes, those servants were allowed to leave the convent or go out, maybe to buy something, but they stayed also in the convent. They have their own bedrooms in the convent. Well, this is an example of a house. It is very big because it was shared. Sometimes when there were relatives, for example, cousins, two or three nuns who lived together. How we know there were three nuns? Because there are arches. There used to be beds. Yes, one in here and one in here. The kitchen Nuns used to make delicious cakes, breads, everything for selling. 
but also this was very important because we have to make a lot of this. The holy bread, the Eucharist wafers oh, for the churches. Kitchen with an oven and upstairs they have a terrace. They were more than 81 houses in one time, but not everyone like this is very big. Some of them were more simple because it was just for one nun. Okay. Because they cook by themselves and they have their own ceremony, it was different life. We can compare the other comments, but this one was very unusual. And the nuns are now in the inside huh. where they live. There are around 20 nuns. Here, uh, now. She is a nun that she went. Okay. Well, uh, they are still cloisters, means they don't have contact with people. They prefer to be in a spiritual life. Yeah. And they still use speaking rooms. The oldest in this community, she's 100 years old. Oh. One of the youngest, because there are four in training, she's 25. Well, they. It's different not because now they join voluntary. Mm. Nowadays there are no traditions or payments. They really need to be sure before to join the convent. So there is a nun who's 100 years old here? Yes. Oh. The oldest. Mm -hmm. Are those um, practices still there where if they pass away, yeah. can the family see them? Yes. They can't see them? Flexible. Okay, good. Depends. Okay, okay. Yes. The next street, this is another street called Toledo and have other houses with just different ceilings and oldest buildings in the convent. Mm -hmm. yes. In the second room of this house, we find two beds, a little chair, a blackboard to teach music. Well, yes, at one time they received students. What's well, like a boarding school? Mm -hmm. Some families send their daughters only for education. They go in school at the age of three or five. Yeah. One nun, one nun, and one student. Because the, oh. the, the nun was a teacher. The nuns would teach them music, embroideries. They live with nuns. Well, this one, and if you look, is the longest. Yeah. Every entrance was another house. It was really a village. Families brought presents for their daughters. For example, nice paintings and furnitures, and they use it in their houses. When a nun died, all their belongings stayed because it was the property of the convent. Mm -hmm. We can also the servants or the students. Well, more or less 500 women in one time lived here. The best time of the convent was 17th century. Mm -hmm. In some of the houses we read names, for example, here, Mother Cipriano Centeno. The names were written later, after 1970, before there were no names. For the reason we are not sure which now lived in each room. Yes, you can enter and see another example. Again, it's a house. It was from maybe two nouns because there are two bedrooms. And the kitchen is the last one. Nothing to plug it. We put something in there, maybe a cork. And then the water was running here, so they just stop. Maybe they put it here a rock or anything else. Put it and the water stop and have to change the way. Easy. Put something in the channel, something in the side of the pot. Finish to wash, to cut the cork and here the water went down. Huh. Because there is another channel underneath. So this was all for laundry? Yeah. Okay. This is... This was the bath, but not to take a bath every day or to clean their bodies. This is for something more spiritual. You have to take a bath or a spiritual bath of the cold once a month. Just oh. like if we were doing baptisms. Once oh. a month, servants use this bath and then have another. Okay. And that's a well, I suppose, right? No, it's just a channel. To see that there is a channel around it. It's ah. Okay.
This house is something different because it's very big. It was just for one nun. Maybe her family was very wealthy, very important. Big bedroom, nice courtyard, kitchen. Well, they live like that. They, their families wanted that. Wow. Until uh, 19th century, you're not were allowed to have those buildings. But later, I'm going to talk to you later about the reform. When the reform came from the Vatican, they not were forbidden to use those things again. Okay. Yes. And now in the new convent, they live together. There is only one kitchen, one dining room. They don't have servants. It's different. It's normal. Uh, what's that uh, church called? Santa Catalina. Oh, Santa Catalina. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Each convent used to have a church. And for reason, there were many churches in, in Peru. We continue in this way here. Well, here, this building used to be a church. It was the first church in the convent. It is not very big like the other, but something happened. The reform came from the Vatican. Pope Pius IX created new rules for convents and monasteries. The nuns in this convent were, in some way, forced to remember. If you are cloister nuns, you have to live in a communal way and to respect the poverty vows. They were forced to live together. And for that reason, they closed their houses, they left their belongings in there, and they never used it again. And together, 80 nuns only used communal rooms. In a normal convent, the nuns only need one kitchen, one dining room, one dormitory. And I'm going to show you that, only communal rooms. After the reform that was in 1871, mm -hmm. that time was the reform. And this was a place for... Oh, this is kitchen, but this is a storage. Oh, that's a storage, okay. That's a stove, I think. In this part of the kitchen, they do the bakery. You see the molds are making different kind of cakes and breads. Wow. Everything is kitchen. More or less, in this reform, there were 80 nuns. 80 nuns have to learn how to live like that. And now no cooks, no servants, nothing. No. They made their own food. Yes, they have to cook up for themselves or cooking for selling things. But no more for other people, no more students. They have this kitchen until 1969 or less. Uh, there's no little filter, they're still dripping. Is this the kitchen or is it that? Everything is kitchen. Is it the kitchen? What was that? Uh, mixing bowls. They make a lot of bread wow. and they need big mixing bowls. Yeah, for 80 people, right? For them, it's very, important. it's very important. The nuns used to meet here, on, for example, on Sundays. Okay. Before the reform, they have houses and servants, and they receive presents. Well, they met here, and they, between each other, they trade things. It's like when they were doing market, but between nuns. The most important nun for the convent, her name is Anna. Anna joined this convent at the age of three for the boarding school. She stayed here during that education, but later she preferred to become a nun. It was her choice. She stayed here all her life. Anna died in this convent at the age of 80, 1686, all her life only here. Well, she did a lot of miracles and predictions when she was alive, but only one miracle was proof, was recognized by church, and it happened in 1932. This miracle was that a woman who got a terminal cancer, her husband came to the convent to ask for some prayers. The nuns gave to that man a little bit of earth that was found over the coffin of Anna. The woman that was sick in the hospital mixed that earth and she drank it. She mixed it with water and she drank it. She ate it like a medicine. After some weeks, she didn't have her cancer. Her doctor certified that she was cured. Because this miracle happened, later, Pope John Paul II visited Peru in 1985. Pope, Pope John Paul II blessed this man. She only passed the first step. She was just blessed or beatified. So Anna is still in process to become a saint. It's not a saint yet. Yes. Yeah. 
It's very special. People put people well this is the last uh, this is already a refectory or the dining room. After the reform we have to eat together in the same place in silence for the three meals. The Ketan over there. Every day one nun has to read the Bible and she go up to the pulpit. Well that was in turns. The nun have to read, she have to do it for the three meals. For the reason that nun didn't eat for one day. She read breakfast, then she was in lunch, and then for dinner, and she didn't eat. The next day, another lunch. Mm -hmm. Have some table works in there. Some oh, wow. Well, there to have already reforms because maybe the founder or maybe one that was very strong and made the reform. Okay. But there were comments like this one that was difficult. Okay. And only the Pope could do the change. Okay, okay. Yes. Sorry. Okay. So now uh, in the churches, everybody in the convent, everybody sleeps as a, as in, a new, in a new convent, they have individual rooms, okay. but simple, very small. But they have a common kitchen? They have a common, common kitchen, kitchen, yes, they have to. Because after the reform, they get like nice communal. <laughs> big dining room, sorry, big bedroom, dormitory, but now it's uh, in our gallery. Because Many paintings were abandoned in those buildings that not used to had a present of the family was left. And well, the paintings were moved to this room when the museum was opened in 1970. All the paintings are re original, are from 18th century, never restored it because we have most of the time dry weather, the paintings are still in good condition. Yeah. And this room, this art gallery nowadays, because it has a good acoustic, can be rented for concerts. It's possible to do a uh, violin or piano recitals here. So, I think this dorm room is shaped like a cross, is that right? Right, it seems like a cross to me. So, um, Santa Catalina was a nun or a, she was a saint? I don't know anything about her. Uh, <laughs> she was a nun, okay. like nuns from here. Okay. But, like, for example, Ana de los Angeles, uh -huh. she made miracles, she was a holy life. Okay. Reason the church okay. beatified her and then canonized her for a reason that was a saint. Okay. But she's already dead because she lived in the 14th century. Right, right. She so lived here. She lived in Italy. She lived in Italy, but when they founded it, they named it after her. In Initially? In honor of her. Okay, in because, honor of her. You know, for example, in Peru, we're very Catholic. Yeah. For example, for me, my, my favorite saint is Santa Rosa de Lima. Okay. If I found a school, I like it to call the common Santa Rosa de Lima. Okay, the okay. The same happened with the founder. She wanted the name of that saint in honor of her favorite saint. Okay, so when it was built, it was named... Santa Catalina, not after some time. As soon as, okay, it was founded on her name. It was very important to put a name because it's like if you, you have the protection of that saint for this place. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, most of the churches and convents have a name of Holy Mary or Jesus or a saint. Okay, uh, okay. 